Well, hello again. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2016. This is a series of videos running right the way through 2017. Now, last time we got just halfway through the preferences and I get so many questions uh, about the preferences that I think it, it's key that we do complete this. So if you wanted to get onto the exciting stuff about uh, uh, various kinds of graphics, uh, bear with us. But today we're just going to finish off on the preferences. And we're going to go back to our preferences screen now and look at where we were. We're going to talk about job jackets on a different occasion. Uh, but there is a preference here which can evaluate the layout using the job jacket rules. And that's really powerful. We're going to come back to that uh, on open, on save, on output or on close. Now, uh, my recommendation when we get there will be to use it on output so that if you're using rules, every time you output that document, uh, every time you're going to print it or, or export it as a PDF, then it will just run through your rules and tell you you're using the wrong fonts or your pictures are not um, CMYK, they're RGB, or you've got a tilt of a half degree, which is a mistake, or whatever rules you put in there. Okay, um, something I hear a lot is how do I distill uh, a, uh, a document so that it can, it can be output as a PDF to be distilled later by Acrobat Distiller or by some other utility. Uh, it used to be that you would try and do this by print output and then save as a file, that's quite complicated. Don't do that anymore, it'll be filled up with all kinds of garbage. Um, rather, go to here, application, PDF, and uh, use create postscript file for later distilling. Now, I only do this if something's going horribly wrong with a document. Sometimes it's got a bad graphic in and it just doesn't ever produce the PDF file. It might be possible to figure it out by doing it in Acrobat. And Acrobat can tell you what's going wrong. Usually, direct to PDF. It's got the latest uh, PDF stuff. And again, you can in increase the virtual memory. Uh, you've got to exit Quark and then come back in again uh, in order to, for that to make a difference. But here's an interesting one. I would set the default name of a PDF to be Project Layout. So um, if we go into, so let's go back to the document. If I create a new layout, um, so I'm going to command click on that, or control click rather, or right click, and I can do a new layout, and I can give that name, uh, a new name, for example, um, special. And what's now going to happen is whenever I output, uh, if I set my preference in that way, whenever I output, uh, it's going to give the name of the project and the name of that layout uh, as my default thing. So if you use multi-layout documents, that's very helpful. Okay, moving on, we'll talk about red line on a different occasion. That's it's not particularly helpful unless you've got a color problem. Um, spell checking, uh, if you want to ignore uh, words and numbers and ignore file, internet and file addresses, you can do that. In fact, I would always have ignore internet and file addresses because otherwise the spell checking would just get cross about them. Tables, um, you allow anchored tables to break automatically. I would always have that on. That's the default. There's no reason to change that unless you really know why. And now fractions and prices. Now let's look at this for a second. Um, Quark Express can make you fake prices and fake fractions. So you've got some open type uh, fonts with the correct um, open type fractions built into it. If I, if I go to my glyphs window, uh, so I'm going to window glyphs, and I'm going to just go on to this one, which is Gaudi Old Style Standard. And Gaudi Old Style Standard is, is a classic font from the 1920s. You see loads of stuff in there from the 20s. I'll so just to expand that up. And it's got actual font features with the uh, halves and the three quarters and the quarters in there. How lovely is that? So to achieve that, all I need to do is... Uh, I don't want to turn that, is select that and go to character, uh, use the open type thing here at the bottom, and turn on fraction. So if I turn that off, you'll see it goes back to seven and a half like that. Now that is great, and you should always have that turned on unless there's a reason not to. Uh, however, what do you do for seven and one third? Because uh, the um, 
there isn't a one-third in Gaudi old style. Now, if I go back to preferences, um, well, for, for a start, let's, let's, let's quickly do, let's show how you do it first. So if I create a uh, so seven and one-third uh, and one-third, so I'm going to um, just expand that so you can see it. I'm, I'm doing it like that. And if I now go to style and uh, type style, not type style, where am I looking for? Um, I've lost myself now. So I've got type style, yes, make fraction. Okay, so it's type style, uh, make fraction. And it, it makes a fraction out of action. I, I just wanted to select the fraction itself. So uh, style, type style, make fraction. And it does that. However, for your particular font you're interested in, that may not look like the official one. In fact, with this one, I've worked on it quite a long time by uh, using this preferences thing, um, changing the size and the offset and the scale of the numerator and the numerator and the denominator to give me in Gaudi old style. It's not quite perfect. You can see um, uh, that that one is slightly different from that one. Uh, what I've done is I, I've thickened the letters uh, and shortened them. But those preferences enable you to specify exactly how that numerator and denominator are going to look. You do the same thing with prices. So I, I don't use the prices myself, but if you do, you can just set that exactly right. Now, um, what other things I want to talk about? Um, use open type kerning, always turn it on, unless there's a really important reason not to. And also allow open type transformation on mixed color text. Now that's by default, that's off. If you use the Chartwell fonts, which are one of my favorites, uh, and this is a Chartwell, so it's a Chartwell is just a font, which is like a cheat font, where um, you turn the discretionary ligatures on, and it converts <coughs> 17 plus 25 plus 30 plus 16 in different colors into, turn those discretionary ligatures back on, into a chart. <coughs> but you must have this preference of uh, open trap transformations uh, in color uh, on, otherwise it won't work. If I just turn that off, okay, and you get that. So, uh, if you're using Chartwell, Chartwell or anything like that, you've got to have those open type transformations turned on. Okay, let's just talk about a couple more things and we've got to stop. So in the print layers, so that's a project level thing. Every project could have that done the same. But if you open Quark with no project open, you can change that. It will stick with it. In fact, uh, all kinds of things you can create, for example, item styles and paragraph styles with no document open. They'll be persistent throughout Quark's use. Okay, in the print layout, uh, which is the layout we're in, uh, we've got uh, various kinds of things. Um, uh, auto page insertion. If you're wondering why your page is not being inserted, uh, then just make sure the auto page insertion uh, is not off. Happened to me once, couldn't understand why. Um, also, you can turn the framing inside or outside. So normally, framing is uh, like that. Um, but if I want the frame to be outside the picture, so you see I'm losing part of the picture there. If I want the frame to be outside the picture, uh, I can, per document, per project, change the framing to be outside. And uh, if I create a new um, a, a new uh, image, it doesn't change the one you've got, and give that such a frame, then that frame will then be uh, outside the box, not inside. You see that there. So here's one I created earlier. Just I'm going to copy that and paste that there. Oops, paste that in there. So I can now have on this one, I've got the frame is inside the box. On this one, the frame is going to be outside the box, except, uh, yeah. Um, change that in there, and that's how it works. Measurements, you can change your units. I always do. I like millimeters. Um, 
paragraphs, you can change the auto leading. So for most things, it's 20% you want, which is an additional 20% of leading on top of set tight. Uh, but for a, a novel, it would usually be 30%. So often on a project basis, you can make that. You can do it in the, in the style sheet as well. Uh, you can change the hyphenation system. Um, on the characters, we can change the superscript and the small caps in just the same way uh, as uh, we did with the uh, fractions. You can set the ligatures to break above one. Actually, I would say two. So if you've got automatic ligatures like FF, uh, I in the font, why break them at all? And you can set the kerning to be auto kerning above something. Now, I would set it at four point, which is the minimum size you can have in Quark Express because the kerning should always be on. Microsoft Word has the kerning off by default, which is why Word's text always looks rubbish compared to Quark's text. Uh, but if there's a particular reason, you can change it there. Um, you can set defaults for the tools. Uh, so the most important one is the, the item tool where you can set the nudge um, increment. And the nudge increment is when you use the arrow keys uh, to move something around. So I'm going to put the arrow key on there, I'm going to move it. If you option or alt click, it does it a tenth of that. Uh, if that's not the right thing for you, just change it there. You might want to change it back for a different document. That's a document level thing. Guides and grids, uh, snap distance, uh, self-explanatory, color management, should never have to change this, but I would change vector and EPS, color managing on, so I can allow Quark's own color management to work with those. Otherwise, you can have a Pantone color in an EPS file or a PDF file, which looks different from the Pantone color which is used in Quark Express. Uh, and if that's an output of CMYK, uh, it will look different. If it's output as Pantone, of course, it will be correct. But if it's output as CMYK, it will be different. Well, that is just a very quick gander through the preferences. Um, basically, if, if in trouble, uh, think of three things. One, do I need to delete the preferences? If stuff is going wrong, um, then uh, I would use uh, a utility called Quark Cache Cleaner. Um, and uh, actually, that's not the one I wanted, but there's Quark Cache Cleaner uh, enables you to delete the preferences and to um, uh, delete the, the image cache. If stuff is going really funny, delete the preferences. Secondly, uh, if you want things that aren't in the preferences, like style sheets or item styles, create them with a blank doc, with, with no document open, not a blank doc, but no document open. So if, if, if I now uh, in Quark Express, uh, just enter that, uh, exit that, I can now go to styles and any styles I create now will uh, become uh, part of uh, Quark's own kind of baseline. Uh, and finally, if stuck, check, is there a preference doing what you want to do? My name is Martin Turner. I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2016. Thank you for watching uh, and I hope to be with you again.